The president a year ago said, let's close down Guantanamo. Yeah. Isn't he the president? Yeah. Why don't we close down Guantanamo? Well, we're talking with Congress about what comes after Gitmo, because, you know, I'm sure the Pitkin County Jail would love to have these people arrive here. <laughs> but, uh... Uh, Does that take that long to figure out how to get these people out of Oh, uh, not, with, not with this Congress, not with this Congress. Uh, look, we, we, we didn't consider a rebuke. We welcomed it. We think that it's important for the Supreme Court to be held, to be heard from on the question of what do you do with enemy, you know, with enemy unlawful combatants. No, 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 no. Look, look, look. I mean, we, we, were, we were told that U.S. citizen had a certain, if you were a U.S. citizen being held down there, you had a certain rights. If you were held on U.S. Uh, soil, uh, you, you had certain rights, even if you were an, an alien, uh, not a U.S. citizen. So we're happy to have this clarified because, we're look, what other war have we faced an enemy that has not signed the Geneva Accords since the Geneva Accords have been around? What, what country, what, what, what war have we engaged in when we have people who don't wear a uniform, don't recognize the government, and don't abide by whatever the commonly established rules of law of war are at that point? This is it. So we welcome the Supreme Court helping clarify this situation. We would like to, the president would like to close Gitmo, but we need, to, we need to close Gitmo by doing two or three things. One is by getting countries to accept back their nationals so that they can make a decision about what to do with them. Second, by making decisions about each one of those individuals as to whether or not they represent a continuing threat. And thirdly, having a process in place, the military commissions and whatever else there is after that, that allows us to try these people and, and hold them. Now, you, you, remember, this is sort of unusual. I don't remember this kind of hubbub in World War II when we had Arizona, uh, it, it filled, Arizona and New Mexico filled with camps full of Nazis. But well, we got, we, we got feel to, bad about the internment camps of the Japanese in World War II. Yeah, but anybody who, any, anybody who suggests that the Japanese internment camps in which U.S. Uh, military personnel were killed, starved, and tortured compared to Gitmo, which is overseen by regular visits of the International Red Cross, in which our principal pr health problem down there is gain of weight. Yeah. We feed them so well. So well, wait, look, wait, we, you, go you know we, we go to we go to we we go to extraordinary. Look, I think Gitmo is a necessary component of the war on terror. I, let's find something else, but let's have an agreement on what that is, because look, it may it may not be Gitmo, but it's going to be the brig in Charleston, South Carolina, or it's going to be the Pitkin County Jail. It's going to be the Florence, Colorado Federal Maximum Security Facility. We got to hold them someplace. These are bad people. Right. These are people who threaten who threaten the United States of America. We have a Constitution and habeas hey, corpus. We can hold bad people. We have a Constitution. Constitution that applies to U.S. citizens. Okay. We have habeas corpus that apply to U.S. citizens. We have an international code that applies to all the signatories of that code with regard to how you treat military prisoners Let me and prisoners of war. And guess what? I don't see Mr. Zawahiri or Osama bin Laden's signature on that document, nor have the way that they handle people like Daniel Pearl been in keeping with the International Code of War.